Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. We're talking about wrestling, of course. Our stop this day will be in New York City. The Bill Farrell International and U.S. Non-Olympic Weight Team Trials are set to take place November 9th through the 12th. Joining us to talk about it, one of the directors, John Tush. John, how are you? Good, Scott. How are you? Great to talk to you again. And you know what, John? It's great to talk to you. I'm so pleased... Uh, to be a part of the event again this year. The New York Athletic Club has held this event for over 50 years. When did you first, when will you first start uh, to start your affiliation with the New York Athletic Club? Oh boy, well I uh, was born and raised in New York City, um, so I was sneaking in the back door um, from my junior year of high school. I'm 54 years old, so that's a long time ago. You're no longer uh, sneaking in the back door though. <laughs> yeah, I became a member. I, I actually was just, uh, I just got into the, well, it's three years ago now, I got into the quarter century club. So I've, I've been there uh, either athletic member while I was competing for the club or as a full member uh, for just about 30 years now. Wow. Well, you've given back. The club continues to give back through its leadership, extending sponsorship dollars when and where they can for athletes to be able to compete. Um, this event has been renamed to honor Bill Farrell. Um, I asked, a, I won't name him, but I asked a young wrestler what uh, he knew about Bill Farrell, and sadly, he didn't know much. Can you enlighten us a little bit as to who Barrel, uh, Bill Farrell was and what he's meant to our sport? Oh, uh it, it's endless. Um, a little known fact is that Bill Farrell was the original Marlboro man. I don't know. If, uh, of course, you probably knew that, but um, many people don't. Um, he was a, quite a guy, a fantastic businessman. Uh, he was the president of the New York Athletic Club, um, of the entire club as well. Uh, 1972 Olympic um, a coach. Um, he started the wrestling program at the new, at uh, the modern day wrestling program at the New York AC. He brought Sonny Greenhall into the club to succeed him. I mean, he's just the, the really the the godfather of it all. And then Sonny took the reins from there and and brought it to uh, to new heights. This and, year, and now Dave Fox is doing the same. This year is a is a very unique year in that we are exploring new territory with the addition of the U.S. non Olympic weight team trials. Um, I really like this idea because, again, is extending opportunity to more young athletes. But boy, does it put a lot on the table of the volunteers of this event. Well, we first of all, it, it's a it's a it's a family and group effort to do this every year. Uh, every year, and I Mo uh, Tavak Oli and look at each other and say, "Why are we doing this to ourselves again? Uh, why don't we just hand this off to someone else?" And it's it it is such an undertaking. Uh, but it's a labor of love, and it takes the entire wrestling club at the New York AC to do it. Uh, there, there's so many people to, to thank. So we've actually started a tradition to um, acknowledge and honor uh, those that have been involved for so long and make it happen this year. It's Tom Courtney, uh, Larry Cantor, and John Lorenzi, who um, are all on the board of the wrestling club, and just it, it wouldn't happen without those three guys. So... We'll, we'll be honoring them along with uh, Cetrek Argonian, who I know was a good friend of yours and unfortunately recently passed away. And we, we, we desperately miss him. We do. Um, a, a real ambassador uh, for our sport, um, involved in so, so many aspects of, of, I guess, the administration on a worldwide level of wrestling. Um, the Bulgarian uh, Wrestling Federation is uh, honoring him this year at the club along with uh, um, Olympic champion uh, Valentine uh, Jordanov uh, has sponsored that and is uh, very much a part of honoring of Set. And, you know, Set was a very, very special individual. Uh, when I was a chairman for a short time, you know, it, he was always there for us, always there for me personally and to give guidance. Um, he was a very, very outspoken person, uh, but he had always had wrestling and, and people in, in in the forefront of his mind to help and we again we just truly miss him we do we miss him daily he was a uh, on my very first trip to cover a wrestling event in new york he picked me up at the airport and from that day it was uh constant uh phone calls back and forth emails sharing our love and our passion for the sport so i think did it's he, terrific did he pick you up in the cadillac you bet he did 
<laughs> and he immediately got on on star and talked to some people about a reservation at a restaurant or something. Yeah, he was we, showing we've me all how... been in the Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, maybe that's where I got my appreciation for those cars. But yeah. listen, uh, I, I can't thank you enough for, for joining us to talk about this. The, uh, the event has changed, and, uh, but at the, at the end of the day, it's really the same. It's serving young athletes and their ultimate goals to compete on the world level to represent the United States. The Unirac Athletic Club has a lot of sports that it does support, and at some point on any given day, on any given week throughout the year, they're competing somewhere around the world, aren't they? Yeah, well, to be more specific, we are the most successful athletic club in the world. We have 184 gold medals. 184. Um, yep. And it's just, when you walk in the lobby, I'm excited for you to see it next week. Um, there's a, there's a, a pictures and a, and a display honoring Rio's athletes. It's just very, very impressive. And every time you walk in there, you have a, a feeling of, of, of pride. Uh, but for this tournament specifically, it goes beyond just the club. Um, we have, I don't know how many sponsors, but many sponsors. I won't try to name any of them because I, I don't want to leave anybody out. But the entire wrestling community rallies around this tournament. It takes an army to do it. And everybody is just, you know, willing to give and help and, and put, uh, you know, put resources behind it. Uh, not to mention all the kids that we have come and volunteer uh, from Beat the Streets, uh, from the local high schools. It's just amazing. But what people don't realize is that when I, I brought a couple kids last year from from New Jersey and, you know, they 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 go to the NCAs every year and they see their heroes from afar at this tournament. You see those same heroes, um, not only from this year's NCAA, but years past right in front of you. You could reach out and touch them. That's how intimate this this setting is. Um, and, and spectators just love it. I mean, there's no other setting. And as you know, we've done the club off-site before, and that has its own appeal. But to, to watch these, the world's best, from 16 different com uh, countries this year against our best from this country, it, it's just incredible having them you know, six inches from a from a middle school wrestler that just uh, is in awe. It's fa it's a fantastic opportunity for kids. I don't know why, um, you know, they don't make the trek in as much as we would like them to. I, I don't think they understand this setting and, and how great it is. Mm. And I want to remind those that are coming in that will buy a ticket to watch and witness what we're talking about. But there is a dress code. Uh, to enter the New York Athletic Club, and they've strongly held to this. The membership endorses it, as do we. But maybe you could identify the dress code so people won't be surprised or turned away. Yep, sure. We're we're very proud of our club. Um, so there's no jeans, no sneakers, and no T-shirts. Um, it used to be you had to have a tie. Uh, when I started sneaking in, you had to have a tie. And I remember those nights getting dressed up, even if you were sneaking in the back door. You, you know, you, you didn't. You, you, you dressed up to go there, and it's a special place. But uh, just no sneakers, no jeans, and no T-shirts. Easy enough to do. I've, I've, I think I was loaned a tie or two once, <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> We're talking with John Tush in the Nike hot seat today. The topic at hand, of course, is the uh, Bill Farrell International, the former New York Athletic Club Holiday Classic, and now also the U.S. non-Olympic weight team trials. It's set for New York City November 9th through the 12th. Uh, perhaps uh, this is where we leave it for now, and we hope you folks will take time to join us. It'll be broadcast on Flow. You'll look for it, of course, in person, if indeed you can make it. It's right off the Central Park, next to the Parisian, on the other side of the street. Some of the best champagne and caviar you could ever want. John Touch, it's always good to see you, man. My best to your wife, Santa, and, uh, and everybody in New York City. I'm looking forward to joining you next week. I'll see you next week, my friend. Take a look for it, folks. It is a big event, and we want you there, November 9th through the 12th. Again, it's honoring Bill Farrell and also our great friend Cedric Agonian. As a wonderful, wonderful, generous gesture by this club and these wonderful fans of the sport we love. I'm Scott Casper, closing it out one more time. Thanks so much for watching.